Hello again. We've got some great new features in Chroma Scan version 1.5, so I'm just going to jump right in and walk you through them. In addition to fixing a few bugs, including our biggest crashing bug, we have three key new features. First, we've extended iCloud support to allow you to edit your text, GEDCOM, or QLOC files on your Mac or PC, and then those changes automatically get added to Chroma Scan. Next, and this is a biggie, we have an all new metadata editor that allows you to add or correct metadata on a photo by photo basis. Finally, we've added support for the description metadata tag. You know when they say a, a photo says a thousand words? Well, how many times have you looked at a photo and wondered what was going on? I know I have. The description tag is an industry standard metadata tag that allows you to add up to 2000 characters to the metadata of a photo and wherever that photo goes, the description goes with it. It's a great way to add some backstory to, into the photo in a way that will survive for generation. And our new way of adding it is the easiest in the biz. Let's dive into some examples. Last release, we added support for iCloud Drive, and I hope you guys have been using it because it's going to make working with your photos so much easier. With version 1.5, if you imported a GEDCOM file or a text file to add names to the voice recognition engine, you can now edit them on your Mac or PC and instantly have them added to Chroma Scan. On my iPhone, I've got a, a name file that I've just imported as a text file, and it has 10 names in it, but I want to add another. With version 1.5, I can just jump back on my Mac and add however many names I want back to the text file, and as soon as I hit save, the changes jump up to iCloud and then back to Chroma Scan, where I can use that n new names for tagging photos almost immediately. The same concept applies to QLock files. If you've added custom locations into Chroma Scan using the QLock import, you can open that file on your Mac and PC and add new addresses. When you save, those new addresses get assigned a location prefix that you can then use to precisely geotag your photos. Here, the address to my old office gets assigned to location number 7. Next, I want to walk you through our new metadata tool. It allows you to add, modify, or remove metadata on a photo-by-photo -photo basis, and I think you guys are going to love it. Here's a photo of my daughter Izzy with a couple of really good friends when we were at a springtime festival. The problem with this photo is that while I did tag my two friends, I forgot to tag Izzy. No problem. Back in Chroma Scan, I tap on the image in the detail view, and I see that there's a new icon that looks like a tag. Tapping on that will open the new editor, and I can just add Izzy's name by adding a comma and then typing in her name. Once I'm done, my tag appears with the others, and the changes get moved up to iCloud and to my Mac almost immediately. There's a powerful feature in this new tool that will allow you to batch tag multiple images just by modifying one image's metadata. These images were tagged as being in Palo Alto. Since I went to Cal, I'm no Stanford expert, but I've been told that the campus isn't really in Palo Alto, but rather in its own zip code in something called a census designated place. Bottom line is the location should say Stanford instead of Palo Alto, no problem. With the new metadata editor, I can swap out the correct place easily, but here's a new twist. If all of these photos have been tagged with the same date and location, which they are, I can flip this slider over and apply this change to all of the images taken on that day in Palo Alto. Quick and easy, and it's a great way to do batch editing on photos that were taken in the same day in the same place. Finally, my favorite new feature. We had a ton of fun at this Hooli festival, but Izzy's already forgotten all about it. Years from now, she and her sister might wonder what was going on, and that's where the new description tag comes in. I can select this image and type into this dialog box something about what we were doing that day, and it becomes part of the image file in a way that future generations can find, either by searching across all their photos or just by browsing. In this case, I'm going to paste in a description, but you can type it in. Actually, my favorite way to do this is to tap on the microphone icon and then transcribe it using the voiceover feature that is part of the iPhone operating system. Once I'm ready to save my description, I flip over the switch to apply this description to all of the images that were taken at Stanford that day. This will get saved to the metadata and get pushed up to the cloud so I can see it on my Mac right away. Pretty neat, huh? Well, that wraps up all the new features for version 1.5. We've got a ton of great new features for 1.6, 
and more about that in the next coming weeks. As always, happy scanning.